It says the natives lived in California for 10,000 years. Some say back to 300,000, uh, 10,000 years to 1542. That's a long time, uh, and there could be a lot more in that history if we've had multiple turnovers within 500 years. Within a 10,000 year period, there could have been a, a lot more going on there. The Spanish missionaries arrived in California in the 1700s and it became a U.S. territory in 1847. Uh, the native period is 10, 000, from 10,000 B.C. to 1542. I don't know if that's 10,000 B.C. or as long as 10,000 years ago there. The European exploration, uh, 1542 to 1769. Spanish colonial 1769 to 1821, Mexican period 1821 to 1848, United States 1850 to present. The natives controlled fire and they would use this to, uh, to scorch the land to prevent uh, bigger fires apparently, kind of like what the fire chief does today. Now that history kind of seems... Uh, it seems there's a rewriting of history, and they discovered the Chumash tribe in uh, the 90s, and now the 1990s, and now they're written back into history. This, this, was the, this is where they met here and done this, and so it's tough to say who existed, what really happened, uh, and uh, not to judge these tribes and their casino offering right there, because most of these tribes... It seemed the end game was to get a casino over here. It's not just the casino, but it leads to uh, political control in towns and different things like that. To me, a lot of it sounds fake. A lot of it sounds very fake. Uh, the the telling of the warrior princesses and this that sounds more accurate to me like a mythical land uh, that had fancy things and it looks like there was some type of nobility here that predates uh, American history or this modern history that we're told um, California name given to its mythical island populated only by beautiful Amazonian war Amazon warriors and Amazon, if you've ever watched uh, science fiction, they're very tall, female, uh, and they're in very good shape, or they have a beautiful form, often large breasts, uh, and, uh, well, um, everything's in the right proportions, but they're big. They're big women, and everything's in the right proportion. Now, that could be blown out of proportion. They could have find, found some beautiful women one day, and it was written in word gets around through the game of telephone or writing letters that all they have is tall beautiful women uh, doesn't really seem accurate right there maybe they met a group of women or however things were uh, or maybe the king was smarter and he sent his women out and hid, hid, hid his hand and uh, there's more to it uh, my YouTube is recommending me who are the black pharaohs of Kush uh, mine makes me think of Kuthia Mentu, which was the uh, richest man in history, which is an African man, the richest man in history. <sighs> the maps of the island, they are very detailed. San Francisco, Santa Barbara, or the, the Canal of Barbara, uh, Francisco, Diego, Mendocino is on there, Monterey, uh, makes me think Montezuma and Zuma Beach and also Monte Python and the uh, and that comedic troupe there uh, that uh, did, did the, uh, whatever, the, uh, the legends of Monte Python or whatever that was called there, it's the Holy Grail as well. Uh, Python makes me also think of Pythagoras because the myth of California also has to do with Greek myths of this island. Uh, and the land where the Red Sea would be seems to be uh, a lower depressed desert region with rivers that run through it. Uh, but if you look at it, there's a, it's like a, the lake that is the, the uh, Salton Sea looks like a footprint. It's a, uh, 
and it's a, a desert area that's when you're driving through it looks like mm, this is an ocean this is still an ocean and these plants would uh, grow under the water over here and it looks like if this was all filled in it would be a much different beautiful like uh, some kind of uh, Mediterranean island uh, paradise over there in when they in 1921 they had the festival of the dates and it says the forbidden fruit was served and two years later they went to King Tut's tomb and raided and opened up the uh, tomb and this and uh, did whatever they did there uh, but did they need did they need to get the recipe correct before they went and opened up these tombs uh, the Egyptians sent the seeds of the palm fruit which has the name is Dactylife era now the scientific name of these uh, plants and fruits out there they have a uh, if you break them down phonetically it's very it's kind of like simple in a way like uh, we have this one's this from this and this one's this from this and so uh, where things come from on the fancy side but also on the simple side it's sometimes uh, maybe it, it's uh, it's riddled in through uh, the language back to life era phoenix or phoenix and the phoenix rising if you will and uh, it's called the uh, romance and sex life of the date is the way that they sell the uh, shields date farm uh, video over there and they had a big uh, Egyptian thing with camels. Now there is a, a, a side of old churches, like really small churches and old mosques as well, or old uh, Eastern temples and what we'd see as Western temples, but maybe the Western was the Eastern and the Eastern was the Western there. There's Indio, which makes you think of Indians and Indio. And then there's also a place called Mecca, which they named uh, later in history, they named that place called Mecca. It seems they knew that the seeds would grow and produce fruit there because they don't grow uh, in all kinds of climates. Now they're the only one that produce blonde and brunette uh, dates. Now that's kind of like what they're, the romance and the sex life part and all the hoopla and the girls and this and the frozen seeds. It seems like there may have been uh, more, more going on there. It's the Adventures of Esplandia, or in, it's actually Las Sergas de Esplandia, the Adventures of Esplandia, who was a knight, a Christian knight, and he was fighting uh, the Muslims in Constantinople. They sent uh, Khalifa there, the queen of the Amazonians, to fight for the Muslims, and she was defeated, and she was taken as a bride, a Christian bride, or so we're told though they could be practicing different uh, rituals or religions behind the scene. My thought right there is the uh, temple with uh, James Earl Jones and Conan, the underground temple and the snake and all his dancers and their fancy lifestyle and the two big uh, bodybuilders that he uses as his uh, right-hand man. Are they Apollos and Zeus in a telling? is tough to say. Uh, I say that because those were the names of... Uh, Higgins dogs over there in uh, Magnum PI he had his he would stand and he had his two dogs sitting there and they were Apollos and Zeus Zeus and Apollos he would call these two uh, Doberman pinchers uh, which are known to be a tough dog often wear a spike collar mm. never someone had access to time and they had spaceships I was... <sighs> All right, and the island, like again, the island is very detailed. Uh, Nuevo Mexico is a big, uh, a big region there. But what's missing from the maps is the uh, the Phoenix region. The Phoenix region was also I saw other maps that had the Phoenix region bigger, and the Caliph region also stretching over into the Phoenix region. Those maps seem to be getting scrubbed a little bit, like people. Uh, Try to hide history and rewrite history. Coco Maricopa was over there, I think where Maricopa County would be, uh, and Co Coco Maricopa was there. Did they uh, produce cocoa there, or was it the uh, cocoa-based looking folks? Uh, it's tough to say. 
te- I don't know how to pronounce it. It's te- te- gao, te- gao, uh, Tegao, T-E-G-U-A-I-O. Uh, was presumed to be one of the several kingdoms of gold. So there was supposed to be several kingdoms of gold. And it took a long time before um, it was opened up for the gold rush to people to come in to find gold. Maybe there was always been gold here and people had been refining it and made a very rich kingdom that got exported. Now the first uh, exploration trade routes is to the Philippines right there. And that seems to be, and also the... uh, the Russians and uh, Eskimos would come in from the north uh, to trade as well. And that seems to be that classic trade route there. But there's a spiral that goes down into Hawaii where there's maybe always been a very fancy kingdom. And now academia and the macadamia nut and a real nut right there. I have been called very crazy often, um, especially if you put your information out kind of randomly and if it takes them by surprise and kind of like shakes them to the core like they felt like they're controlling someone but you just come and riddle off some words like <laughs> and you even say it in a funny accent and they're like what are you doing they're like kind of had it up didn't it and the uh, there's nothing to respond but you know you're crazy uh, they say that's one of the worst things you can call someone who's crazy Lake Superior is on the map there. It's Lac LAC Superior. Uh, Island Bermudas. Bermuda is on the map. Much of the, the Yucatan Peninsula. Territory de Labrador. Laborador. Laborador. Uh, so maybe the, the Labrador dogs were from the Canadian region over there. That would kind of make sense. Those guys are uh, pretty well balanced, those dogs, and uh, in a way. And uh, very, very fair dogs, very fair dogs in Labrador, yeah. Now, they didn't have, they said when they explored California, they didn't have uh, domesticated animals other than dogs. <sighs> Maybe one place had little dogs, one place had big dogs, and uh, she breed these dogs together. Uh, people do all kinds of things. La Imerique, Imerique de California, uh, Sinaloa, Zacatecas, Nicaragua, Honduras, Gulf, Groenland, or was that Greenland? And then Iceland, it says something about a pole, like the polar region in Iceland is on the map there. Uh, these old maps. Uh, near Point Reyes, they made Nova Avalon, and they say that means New Avalon. But these, like in the movie Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, when he's talking about the northern ones, he calls them those Nova monkeys. Those Nova, these Nova monkeys. So like Nova could be north. So North Avalon, and was Avalon always Los Angeles, a beautiful, rich kingdom with multiple kingdoms within it. And it was um, what became the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire turns into the Holy Roman Empire all the way up into the basically the time of uh, World War II. And so you can see uh, there's a remnant of that. But there might be the kingdom for the public, the Rome of the public, and then the, the hidden one for the elites where they would have their own ceremonies and their own beautiful fancy things and wouldn't have to worry about uprising or backlash because people aren't seeing them as the kingdom but in a, uh, an elite matrix of the societies of the world. Maybe they've always kept the fancy things around Pasadena, uh, Beverly Hills, and beautiful places around here, and all over the world, different places like that. So Alta Eden and Alta, or Al- Altadena and Alta Eden. When I went through Pasadena, you go to the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, and across the street, there's a, a lot of stairs going into this other field. Like a lot of people would have been going into this field on these uh, brick staircases there. Maybe that was an old uh, sporting field before you get to the, the big stadia. And there's uh, the La Casita de Arroyo and the Arroyo Seco. Is it the, uh, the dry river or is it the second river? That maybe there's different times where it was translated differently right there. It looks like uh, 
it can grow very big that river and also uh, it's it's dry so there's not much in it but that part of uh, Pasadena is very uh, beautiful and some of the houses uh, look much older than the uh, houses that are there because in the older days you'd have a house and a lot of land around it and orchards and whatnot and it wouldn't be uh, all neighbor to neighbor type of uh, living right there and so if you look at the La Casita de Aurora, that's got a big chimney too, this big, uh, beautiful, well, it's not beautiful, it's a big stone chimney. To me, it's like uh, seeing it like in a history standpoint, it looks like uh, that's very beautiful. I met a man named Marcus there one day. He said, come in the spring, and it's very nice because he saw me looking at the flowers and going around the different plants because these plants, some of them I had never seen. Uh, there's a lot of things that are uh, hidden in plain sight. Yeah, the plants that make some of the narcotics, I see them growing around in uh, some of the most troublesome narcotics. I see them growing in, in yards, but it doesn't mean the plant is a trouble itself, but the way that it's used and uh, hidden, that uh, that's where that maybe the energy of this plant is coming from, this drug is coming from this plant right here, and it's um, hidden through a bunch of other different things, or maybe they need other ingredients from those other things to give them the desired effect. Uh, it was called a cup, it was a, some kind of cup of tea. And so one of the most hardcore illicit drugs was also a cup of tea. And so uh, seeds and different herbs into tea. 1774 to 1776, coincidentally as America's revolting, uh, Juan Bautista de Anza, that's the name, Juan Bautista de Anza, uh, he was headed towards Mission San Gabriel or San Gabriel Archangel. So did the Archangels live there? Uh, did they have a place where, ooh, -wee, heaven is a place on earth? Uh, was it like that? Maybe it still is in a way, like in a um, that Disney movie where they switch the ring and it changes from one land to, it's the same land, but it's, it's alive in one area and it's dead in the other area. 